join thank you for joining once again i think we spoke some time back but uh, i really wanted to talk to you a little more so first of okay. all everyone ayushi is a person uh, who scored a 760 on 12th of august that is not even a month ago and her verbal score is pretty pretty awesome 942 quant is 49 so overall a 760 score 99th percentile so i feel uh, she will be able to tell you exactly how she went about it and so on but uh, i was told that you feel you felt that your quant was strong and uh, then your verbal was weak but take us through your preparation how much time it took you how many hours a day could you do how consistent you were etc just take us through the prep please Mm -hmm. So I think when I joined in June, I started with like a blank mind saying, okay, I, mm -hmm. let's assume that I don't know exactly what quant is for GMAT. Mm -hmm. So I need to start from scratch again. Mm -hmm. And um, I think around those classes when I was doing geometry and everything also, I was struggling a little in classes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, clearly I wasn't as strong as I thought I was from a GMAT mm -hmm. perspective. Right. So I think just starting from a blank slate and making sure I was following everything that you were teaching in class and mm -hmm. practicing on my own after that to just make sure I I have mm -hmm. actually absorbed those concepts really, really mm -hmm. helped. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, and which were your trouble, uh, top, troubled topics probably in the quant part? Like were there some, you said already geometry yes. probably, but were there any other? So I generally struggled with one, like I said, geometry and the other one for me was probability permutation combination. All right. And in the verbal section, if you had any weaknesses, if at all, even after a 40 score, though, I mean, it's a pretty high score, but still, if you had some challenges, tell us, and then I'll ask you about the exam and prep experience. Please. Yeah. So uh, with verbal, I initially started with a very weak SC and mm -hmm. uh, CR was relatively strong, but SC was weak and mm -hmm. RC was, I think, an average. I mean, oh. there were some topics that I was doing well on. There were some topics I used to struggle with. So whenever there were like science-related topics and biology used to come up mm. and things like that used to happen, I used to struggle in RC. Right. So, I mean, yeah. And uh, what was the amount of time you joined in June and you wrote the exam in August, right? August. So two months roughly, two months. Yeah, 5th yes. of June or something would have joined. And uh, two months and one week probably. And tell us about your working hours. Did you have enough time? Did you really make time for this? Were you consistent with your prep? What was it like? So uh, my office hours are basically nine to five, but my office is also an hour away. So that means I generally end up spending eight to seven-ish mm -hmm. traveling for work and actually at office. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, I mean, I would generally come back home, start prepping at eight every night, just till 11 to make sure I'm giving it at least three hours every day. Mm -hmm. And I made sure this was like a consistent habit that I was doing every day. It wasn't like, okay, chalo Monday ko kia, let's do the next thing mm -hmm. on Thursday mm -hmm. because okay, Tuesday, Wednesday, we had long days at work or something. Mm -hmm. But I made, so I didn't do that. I made sure I was consistent. I made mm -hmm. sure on weekends when I actually had a lot more time, I was doing mm -hmm easily like a hundred hundred fifty plus questions on one okay. single day and That's actually great. looking at those mistakes and uh in two months uh, when did you feel that you're really ready for the kind of 99 percentile score that because that is how you would have gone ahead i believe thinking that you would do this this time nail this correct i i mean um i think i was doing my june curriculum with you and at that point in time there was also a course where you were starting, which was called a crash course of thoughts, mm -hmm. which said, okay, one month we'll prep you. Mm -hmm. And I think just looking at the fact that you were offering that gave me a lot of confidence that it's possible in a month. So mm -hmm. then I, I mean, in July, I absolutely decided that within the next month, we absolutely have to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think right about the time our classes ended and mm -hmm. you sent across practice questions and everything. I mm -hmm. completely switched to 700 and 800 level questions, just constantly right. doing only those mm -hmm. high level questions. And please tell me, was there anything unusual on your exam? I mean, overall quant, verbal, uh, pacing, concentration, stamina, anything that you felt that, you know, was unusual from your prep? Because I, I was told also that you didn't do many mock tests. So I, I didn't, no. Uh, yeah, so just so I did us. a lot of sectional prep wherein I would do, mm -hmm. you know, the 31, 36 questions in the timed habit mm -hmm. that you're supposed to do, but I didn't do a lot of mocks. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, on my exam, I was a little shaken because my exam was scheduled for 11 a.m., but I finally got to sit down for it at 1 a.m. So that oh. had already happened. Uh, but I think uh, beyond that, in terms of questions that I got, I think I told you this in mm -hmm. the morning session also, but 
what was a little surprising for me was the simple questions that came up. I don't think I was very shocked about any other question and there was no question that made me think, okay, difficult. It was only the easy questions that popped, on, uh, popped up and I was surprised that, that why are they even here? <laughs> So I yeah, mean, you start judging your level probably that. Am I doing exactly? Okay, okay. First so, questioning them. That's it. I that's it. So you, I mean, it's the reverse kind of thing that generally when people don't score well, they said the questions are too tough. You're saying so a lot of questions seemed very easy to you. I mean, especially in quant, probably right. That's that's what. That's correct. I think uh, actually when I got my seven sixty, I walked out thinking, okay, maybe I could have done better because I think I. I mean, if I manage those nerves when I was looking at those simple questions and maybe just wondering if I've done something wrong that's giving me these simple questions, maybe I could have scored better. Maybe I'd... It seems like that because uh, <laughs> you seem much more prepared than a 760 right now. I mean, it, it seems like that. So fine. And uh, with you have five years of work experience, you told, right? So where are I you have applying? Four, yes. Yeah, four. Okay. So what's the plan now? Where are you applying? What are the schools you're targeting? Uh, I am looking at the M7 schools. Um, mm -hmm. I am considering round two. Uh, okay. I mean, within like the next three, four months, I'll be looking at applying to colleges. Okay. But that, yes, US great. M7 institutes. Super, super. Any particular piece of advice for people who are starting out? Because this is a badge that started yesterday. So they'll really, okay. really be able to take the advice correctly from you. So anything that you would say they shouldn't do because you already had an attempt and, you know, it was a longer journey for you than expected. So tell us like what uh, can some people avoid doing? So honestly, it'll sound like I'm from your team and I'm marketing for you at this point in time. But I think whatever, sir, starts telling us since day one, which is basically that there are no shortcuts. You have to be consistent and you have to make sure you're practicing every day. That stands. Um, I have seen the difference myself when I've done the pre-work and gone to class, when I've not done the pre-work and gone to class. I think if you've done the pre-work and you're coming to class, you obviously have thought through why every option is correct or incorrect. And then it's possible to have a discussion. If you've not done that, I think it's just a it ends up being a waste of time where you have to spend three hours after that class then to just redo that mm. thinking. Right. So I think those two things were really, really uh, strong for me. I think those, those worked well. Mm. The third thing is that first focus on accuracy. Just make sure you're improving on accuracy and you know getting questions correct and then move on to timed practice. So right, I mean, right. whenever I you think, think you're ready for timed practice, move on to it then. So me, I'd like to address everyone practice. else here and say that this is the mistake that I've seen most often people do. They don't have the depth. They have an accuracy of 50, 60% and they start furious practice and mm -hmm. their accuracy doesn't improve and they get very frustrated that I've done 1000 sentence correction questions. Why is 50% still 55%? Why is it not going to 95%? Because you didn't build the foundation. So on a shaky foundation, we build a building. There is no way the building will stand. So it's the same thing. Please, I'm just requesting everyone, build your accuracy first. The speed will take care of itself, frankly. As you would have seen, like you, when you are so confident, did you also feel that that speed will take care of itself? And when you're so confident, your reaction time is so less on a question. Is that something that works? That's That, that absolutely happens because after a point in time, you realize what sort of concepts will be tested. You know... Mm -hmm it'll be the three, four, five triangle or it'll be a similarity question mm -hmm. that'll be there. So you start looking at it from that lens. So I think that that obviously stands. The moment I you always start feel that when you are well prepared, your reaction time yes. on a question decreases drastically and that's where you gain speed. And that's where depth is really, really important. So, all right. I'm really happy that you could join us again today and thanks for your time. I believe everyone will be inspired to work harder looking at a 99th percentile score. And to all the students, we keep calling all the recent scorers to the batches. Probably your batch also had a few. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why this inspiration cycle should continue and go on. Right. Thanks a lot, Ayushi, for joining us. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Right.